Hey gang, Ronan here. As you can see in this game, I am playing the Tier 10 Dutch Destroyer Tromp. This is the second of three in a decision-making series utilizing this particular ship. This is a ship I really enjoy. I've been playing it a lot lately. It took me a little while to kind of get the hang of, but at this point I really like it. You know, one thing that I will say is that, at least in my opinion, it almost requires that you have some help on your side. It's uh, it's really effective if ships are pushing into you, but if they're able to just kind of rush straight at you, or for example, if you have uh, something like a Marseille or a Clébert that are chasing you, you can find yourself in big trouble really fast because the ship, it's not what I would call slow, but it's not especially fast either. And it doesn't have smoke, so it has no way to break line of sight. So if something catches you, why the Moskva felt the need to hit my ship, I don't I don't know. But uh, if something does catch you out in the open, it can light you up and you can quickly find, your, find yourself sunk. So because there are CVs in this game, you can see the enemy team there has a Nakamok. I've started nice and slowly, and you can see our Balao still isn't underway. And I'm pretty sure that we're probably going to have the sub on this side, the red one. Yeah, there is an island up here that I can hide behind. If you know these maps, you know that it's uh, it's not uncommon to push up and get right behind this small island on the south section of the Alpha Cap. And that's, in a lot of cases, what I'm going to end up doing. I do typically like to, as a destroyer, like to support whatever cap circle that I have spawned near. And in this case, that's the Alpha Cap. Now, you can see there's already somebody in the Alpha Cap. And because I started slowly, you know, they may have it nearly secured by the time that I get up here. But I'm going to see what I can do to stop that. I just didn't want to get myself up here and get myself blasted. You can see there's a De Grosse and a Petropavlovsk there, and presumably a destroyer and or a sub. Matchmaking? Well, it's not the world's best, right? We've got... Uh, I'll just stop it here for just a second. You, you do have a CV in the game, although the CV currently is... Got aircraft south of the Bravo Cap. Uh, Schlieffen, De Grosse, Jambar, Zao, Des Moines, Petro. So you got uh, three cruisers with excellent guns for finishing off destroyers. Petro with the 12 kilometer uh, radar, Des Moines with 10 kilometer radar. Sherman, excellent hydro and uh, phenomenal guns. It looks like you can see on the, uh, the mini map right now that the Z-46 is at the Alpha Cap and the Balao is at the Alpha Cap. And that's, of course, from the Moskva having just lit up his radar. And so the Sherman uh, solidly out outguns the Tromp, and the same can be said for the Kitakaza. Z-46, maybe not quite as cut and dry, but there are a lot of threats. So uh, what would you do here? Would you push into the Cap? Would you hide behind the island like I had suggested a minute ago? Now you can see that I threw torpedoes out of each side. And I did that in the hope that either I catch a destroyer in the cap or I catch either the Petro or the De Grosse uh, as they continue their way south. So if you've identified what you would do, I'm just gonna, we'll just keep on moving. And you can see what I did. And I do have support. I have close support. I've got a Schlieffen right behind me. I've got Moskva right behind me, and it looks like our Balao is underway now, too. I'm just going to try and reset the cap. I'm going to take a little bit of fire here, I'm sure. And Z-46, as he reverses, is putting himself right in front of my torpedo. And I should be safe here. He's able to accelerate away from my torpedoes. If you sound the first in this series with the Tromp, you know, I do recommend backing into a cap when, a, when you have that option. Now, I can be, I can be radar here. So I'm going to back out here just a little bit, see if I can get eyes on anything. And if not, I'm going to move forward and get behind the rock. I don't want to get half my HP chipped away uh, due to a radar. Now Petro's getting beat up by the Schlieffen. 
and I'm just just gonna stay right here. I think I'm probably safe. We got our Balao up here now. I should be safe from torpedoes on either side of this island. So what would you do here? Would you stay right here? Would you back up? Would you stay in the cap? Would you leave? Would you cross toward Bravo? You'll see what I do here, of course, any second. I opt to stay here. You can see that there are some red aircraft. If I were to get behind, if I were to leave this area and move forward from where I am right now, I might get detected by air. I might get detected by that Bilal. So I'm just going to sit right here, keep them from getting the cap. You can see that we've got a Yugamo and a Benham on the other side, along with Janan, all in the Charlie cap, facing off with a Sherman. They're backed up by Venezia and Musashi. And I'm guessing Petro is going to continue to turn, so I'm going to lay something out there. Nope, looks like he's going to straighten out. So my airstrike is going to... I had the distance more or less right, but I didn't guess direction. And it looks like I made another bad guess because I don't think he's going to turn back this way. Now that he's falling back, it, what would you do here? Would you stay here? Would you push out? It's, it, it's risky, right? We know that there was a sub here. There's something else in the cap with me. Petro's gone. Z-46 was up on the Delta line. Suggests the Blau is right there. And what's behind me? I've got Moskva here and I've got Hanover south of my position. So I have to be really leery of the possibility of torpedoes coming around this edge that's just off the nose of my ship. You can see I've got aircraft coming this way. Maybe I get eyes from that. I'm 19 seconds from having an airstrike. And if the sub is visible, maybe I can hit it. Well, whatever it was, it's either submerged or it's left the cap circle. Now, I was tempted to accelerate really fast here. But I opted not to because it is still very possible that there might be torpedoes crossing. And I want to make sure, get, make sure I get the cap secured before I do that. Is that going to land? So I do land one on the Balao as he makes his escape. I should be safe from torpedoes here. You can see where the Z-46 is now. He doesn't really have the torpedo range to hit me here. It's possibly dropped him closer, but uh, I feel pretty, pretty sure I'm okay. And so what would you do here? Would you move north? Try and help finish off the Balao, the Petro, and the Z-46. Would you move toward the Bravo cap? We have a 131-point lead right now. We have a one-ship lead, although our Schlieffen is in, he's in pretty rough shape. And we'll see what I did. Now, like the first game in this series, this is kind of a normal game in the Tromp. Um, I, I usually have decent damage, not spectacular. It ranges anywhere from like 60,000 to about 120,000. Uh, the third in this series, I did a lot more damage, and I do have those games occasionally. But this ship is not what I call um, a carry ship. It can, and in the third game in the series, kind of does, but uh, it's tough. It's really tough, because it's not easy to land these weapons, other than the guts. So, you know, trying to get big damage and make the clutch plays it's really, really challenging in this thing. So you can see that their Satsuma is in the Bravo cap now, and that I've crossed this way in an effort to try to help prevent the bad guys from securing this cap. We've got our Balao out there keeping their Z-46 spotted. Moskva is presumably keeping guns on him. Our Schlieffen fell back. He's picked up a little bit more HP, and that was a terrible airstrike drop. Satsuma slowed down in order to avoid the torpedoes, and the second drop that I made is just absolutely a waste. But I'm in the cap. 
and I can help prevent it from being flipped. Now I do have to be careful here. I don't want to get detected. Nakamov is liable to become aware of my existence and decide to do something about it. And I'm going to try. Now you see this thing does not turn especially well. I'm going to try and turn and get behind this island before I'm close enough to be detected as the Satsuma is slowing down again. And I'm going to throw torpedoes out where I think he will be. Now if I'm able to get him burning and he puts it out, then my torpedoes land. Maybe we get a perma flood. So there's a fire. You can see our CV drop torpedoes. As he goes dark. Well, he's continuing to burn. You can see that in the upper right. And he's accelerated again. So now I'm going to be playing chicken. He's no longer in the cap, but I got to make sure that he doesn't get close enough to see me. So I'm just going to use this island. As he takes a big shot. And Jinan's flooding takes out the Satsuma before my airstrike can get there. But it looks like I'm going to be able to secure this camp. We are now down four ships. Duncan, Jinan, Yugamo, Benham. Bad guys are down Satsuma, De Grossa, Jean Bar, and Des Moines. The Z-46 on the red team is really banged up. A uh, beer can floating in the water probably be enough to take it out. So, what would you do? We've secured the Bravo cap. We've still got Venezia and Masashi facing off with Kitakaza and a few other vehicles, uh, vessels over at the Charlie cap. I can see where the Nakamov is hiding. Petro is at 18 clicks out. What would you do? Well, you're going to see what I did. You can see where I just pinged the minimap. That's where I think the Z46 is. And I know he's really low HP. So I'm going to wait for him to head this way. He's just out of my range. I was uh, I was right about there being a red ship there. It wasn't the Z-46, it was the sub. And I'm just trying to do what I can to help out our hand over here. Which really isn't a whole lot. So the Z-46, he's detected, but not for long. Moskva fell back. Venezia is getting banged up over there at the... Uh, the nine line. And I'm going to see what I can do to finish out this Palau. Now these are not really what I would call effective against subs that are submerged. But Schlieffen, he just, uh, he just says nope to the Palau. All right. So it was really kind of a waste for me to turn back this way. I mean, I did it because if the sub was unchecked, for example, let's say why did the mark in our Palau turned and went north to try to keep the Z-46 visible. That would have left our Moskva squaring off with the Balao alone. So that's the reason I turned back this way. Just to make sure that the, the Moskva had some help. Now at this point, we're, we're, <laughs> we're over 10 minutes into the game. I got 36,000 damage, 32 bomb strikes, 6 shells on target from the guns. It's a pretty pathetic effort, but I also have a, have a couple of solo caps and, uh, and that's, that helps the team, right? So it's not always about damage. Now damage is great, but more important than damage is helping the team. And right here, I get really lucky and catch the Z 46 trying to find our sub. There's just no way for him to avoid that. And now I can threaten the Nakamov and even the Petro. Although the Petro radar is a huge threat. I've got 28,000 HP. 
And there are a couple of battleships just south of my position, the Hanover and the Schlieffen, and the Petro doesn't really want any part of those. Petro is going to be going behind the island here in a second, and I can work on just trying to get angles to be able to drop some bombs. Detected there for a second. Probably should have turned the AA on, although I don't know that it would have done anything. Nakamov has turned. He's making a run for it. He's just out of my range. So what would you do here? Would you chase the Nakamov? Would you head south along with Schlieffen and Hanover? How would you handle it? You can see that it takes 11 and a half seconds for these bombers to get there. So I hit the speed boost and I'm going to try to get airstrikes on him. And the torpedoes that I threw out really were just in case the, the Petro came around the corner and I just completely missed. Now our Schlieffen goes down. And we are now down to six ships. There's the radar. And I'm just trying to get fires burning. I know that he flooded. I got a single fire started. Get one more volley off here. There's another fire. One more. Oh, he's making it easy on me now. And just like that, up to 58,000 damage. And that's the second ship I've been able to finish off. Now, Nakamov is continuing to run. And I can't blame him for that. They've just lost the Petro and their Schlieffen. And they are now down to three ships. Now, that begs the question, where is the Kitakaza? Right? Where's the red Kitakaza? I'm still detected. That's probably the Nakamov. But we don't really have anything in that center position anymore, so I have to wonder whether or not he hasn't come through the middle. We're going to find out. What would you do? Nakamov begins to turn a little bit. I can see where the Zao's at on the minimap. I don't want him to be able to begin to get guns on me. Torpedoes have 12 kilometers of range. I'm going to go ahead and throw them out there. And I might be able to catch him with airstrikes. Now, what would you do here? Would you stop so that you can keep your guns on this guy? And you take a quick look at the minimap. You can see aircraft coming this way. Would they, would they be after you? Would they be after the Moskva? I decided to keep going. And with the help of the Moskva doing some damage, I was able to finish off. Now you can see these are obviously from the Kitakaza, right? Those shells. So I'm guessing the Kitakaza is somewhere like Echo 8, Echo 7, firing through that little gap. I'm just going to back up, and I expect he's probably going to make a charge for the Bravo cap. But I've got an airstrike I can get out of here, and if nothing else, maybe I can get this out to turn. I don't have to hit him. If I can get him to turn, maybe he shows broadside to the Moskva. Well, it looks like maybe both things will happen. I'm just going to throw those out there on a wing and a prayer. And now i got to get ready for the Kitakaza. I know where I think he was before. Can I get one more drop off? Now I've got 15 seconds. Kitakaza's got me detected. Got to swing their guns all the way around. Now he's down to 4,000. 3,500. 
2000. Now, he outguns me something fierce, but I had a huge hit point advantage. And that's kill number four. Now, take a look at the, the score. I was really hoping I might be able to pick up a Kraken. I have an airstrike ready, but it just didn't happen. There wasn't enough time. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it. Uh, the Tromp is very fun to play, and you can see in this game, I think pretty well, the combination of weapons can be really fun and effective. And in the third and final in this decision-making series on the Tromp, uh, I'm really able to put it to good use. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.